Recording started. All right, today we're going to be talking about, uh, well, the last topic basically in the light unit. Um, we're going to talk about the Compton effect. Now, we want to put this into a context. We, we've already looked at uh, certain characteristics of light that sort of show light demonstrating wave-like characteristics. Interference, diffraction, polarization, uh, all of these things point towards a, a wave model of light. Um, however, things like the photoelectric effect are showing a particle-like evidence for light, uh, a particle-like behavior. And Compton effect is also uh, very similar to that. And we're going to see as we, we go this is kind of overlapping into the next unit. When we start looking at things of uh, de Broglie wavelengths and electron diffraction, we'll see that sometimes particles can act like waves. Okay, so this becomes very interesting to, to look at and to talk about. So the photoelectric effect uh, we already saw last day, you know, light shown on a metal plate and it will emit charged particles. And this was described uh, by Einstein using uh, the photon model for light. Okay. Um, so different photo emission experiments started to show different things, however. Okay. And here's a sort of a summary of photon properties, energy and frequency e equals HF was one of the main equations used to describe uh, light uh, by Einstein. Okay. Um, now Compton scattering was uh, an experiment done a little bit later on in 1923 and what was being measured was the intensity of scattered x-rays from a solid target as a function of wavelength for different angles. And Compton won the 1927 Nobel Prize for this. Okay, so what's actually happening here? Uh, you have incident light wave coming in to hit an electron. Okay, now the classical expectation was that the oscillating electromagnetic field is going to cause oscillation in positions of charged particles which re radiate in all directions at the same frequency and wavelength as the incident radiation. So basically, the incident radiation, once it interacts with the electron, doesn't change. It's exactly the same. All right. Now, a change in wavelength is something that's completely unexpected in a classical model. Okay, so if light was acting just like a wave, you would not get this uh, change in wavelength. But uh, Compton had more of an explanation like a billiard ball collision, which basically what he's saying is that there's a there's a momentum interaction occurring here. Now momentum is is uh, always associated with objects with a mass and a velocity. However, a photon doesn't have a mass, so how can it have momentum? But Compton's uh, experiment demonstrated that photons do demonstrate a momentum. Uh, so that again is is a, a particle characteristic that the light the photons are are demonstrating. So what's happening is this incoming photon would strike the electron and the electron would gain some energy and it would be scattered and you'd also have uh, the scattered photon. So now, the wavelength, however, the scattered photon was not equal to the incoming photon. So the light wave after, compared to before, was different. And it was quite often deflected through an angle. Okay, so this was what was observed to happen in Compton's experiment. Okay, now there's a, a conservation of energy equation, conservation of momentum equation that were both done for this experiment. Okay, now this is an equation that you're not going to have to know. And neither is this really. 
Okay, well, we use a bit of a derivation of this. The equation that we're going to be using is this one right here. Okay, so let's make that one highlighted. Okay, now what does this equation mean? It means that if you take the um, wavelength afterwards and subtract the wavelength before this collision, it's going to be equal to h over mc times 1 minus cos theta. All right. Now, now this this was known as as the the Compton wavelength. Okay. So let's have a look here, an example problem. Uh, what is the maximum change in wavelength that a 0 0.010 nanometer X-ray photon can undergo by Compton scattering with an electron? Does the initial wavelength, 0 0.010 nanometers, matter in this example? Okay, so we're given the incident wavelength, and what we're looking for is uh, a change in wavelength. Okay, now maximum value is going to occur when theta equals 180 degrees, which means cos theta is going to equal negative 1. Now, I can say that <clears throat> the change in wavelength is going to equal the wavelength final minus the wavelength initial, which, according to the equation that we're using, and this equation is present on your, your formula sheet. Okay, H, Planck's constant, over Me, the mass of an electron, times C, the speed of light, 1 minus cos theta. All right. So that's going to be equal to, um, well, 1 minus a negative 1 will give me 2. So 2h two over me times c. So 2 times Planck's constant, 6.63 .6 times 10 to the negative 34, uh, divided by 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31, the mass of an electron, times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, will give me 4.85 times 10 to the negative 12. Okay, now this is the change. Okay, what is the maximum change? This gives us the change in wavelength. Now, since we've already answered the question, the, the um, initial wavelength is irrelevant. Okay, we didn't actually need this value here. Uh, we had all the other information we required. Okay. Now let's take a look at a second example. An X-ray photon of wavelength 0 0.0500 nanometers scatters at an angle of 30 degrees. Calculate the wavelength of the scattered photon. <clears throat> so here we're given the initial wavelength, the angle of scattering, and we're looking for the final wavelength. So we do know that the change in wavelength equals the final minus the initial. And so we're going to rearrange that formula to solve for the final wavelength. So that's going to be the initial wavelength plus the change in the wavelength. Now the change in the wavelength is described by our equation we used previously, h over mec times 1 minus cos theta. So I'm going to take the uh, initial wavelength, put in that value. h I know, me I know, c I know, and also I know the angle cos theta, which is 30 degrees. I plug it into my equation, I get 0 0.0503 nanometers. Okay, so this is the final wavelength. Now I could express this in, in nanometers, or I could also change this to meters. You may be required to do that. So let's say 5.03 times 10 to the, so nanometers is times 10 to negative 9 meters. So this would actually be times 10 to the negative. 11 meters, which corresponds with what you'd expect for the wavelength of an x-ray because those wavelengths are quite small. All right, so some of the basic things you want to remember about Compton's experiment is that it demonstrated uh, momentum being associated with light, with photons. So again, light demonstrating a particle characteristic. 
and also that this um, you know calculation can be used to calculate the, the difference in wavelength uh, of the incoming and outgoing photons you know incoming to a collision with an electron so after you have uh, Watch this tutorial. Make sure you submit a tutorial summary that you can get marks for it. Good day.